So in this tutorial we are going to make part 2 of the animation using geometry nodes. So let's get started straight away. So we started off from this and we want to transition to a dark environment. So first of all I'm going to delete this heart shape and then I will also delete this grass plane. Make sure to make a new save file for this so you don't lose all the data. And I will remove this and I will remove this and all that's left is the JBL and the HDRI that we brought in earlier. The first thing I want to do is make a chain. So I'm going to add a mesh add a torus. So let's see what it looks like. Head over into edit mode, shift D, RX 90, and bring this over to the side so it barely just touches the other end of the chain. Shade this smooth, G and X move it out of the way. And now let's make a geometry node setup for this. Shift A, curve, bezier, new in the geometry nodes tab. So we are going to add a curve to points. And the reason we are adding this node is because we can set it to length instead of count. So if you use count, it will be an absolute number using the count as the point. So now there will be 10 points, but we actually want to use the length of the curve to determine the amount of points, which means that if we scale this up, we also get more points. So let's add an instance on points because on those points, we want to instance our torus. So let's drag the torus from over here into here, geometry into the instance. And now as you can see, it's way too big. So let's take the scale and bring this down until we get the size that we actually want. But as you can see, it is not following along with the normals of the curve or actually the tangent of the curve. The curve is going like this. There is a tangent, which means there's a vector going like so and a vector going like so. And we actually want this to adjust to the curve itself. So right here, we have a tangent button in the curve to points, which is what we are going to use. So in order to make use of the tangent, we can use another node called align unit vector. So let's type that align unit vector, bring it over here tangent into the vector, rotation into the rotation. And now as you can see, it will follow along with the curve just fine. Now it's still a bit too big. So I'm going to decrease the scale once again until we get something that we kind of like. We can also change the length to something like this and make sure that it fits the entire shape. Now, if we select this and press E, it will add more chains depending on the length. So that's what it does. So let's add the final note, trim curve bring it right before this node, because over here it has already been transformed to points, so we can't place it over here. It has to be a curve for the trim curve to work. And now if we select this endpoint, it will move along like so. So select this, delete all, click on this little draw icon right here and draw some chains. You can also bring it closer to the camera, for example, so we get some bokeh type effects. We already enabled depth of field in the camera in the previous tutorial and draw some more chains. And maybe you want it to be smaller and you can play around with all of this and uh, change the length then as well in order to align everything. And I think this looks just a little bit better. And make sure that when you draw this, you draw from both sides, so from the right side and from the left side, so that when we use the trim curve, they will come in from all sides like so. And this is what it looks like right now. Add some of these. Let's just draw some real quickly. I will make one over here perhaps and uh, maybe one a bit more in the back. So let's go over here, set material and give this a material new, set the metallic roughness and change this to a dark color like so. Then select the material and it's called material 11. And play around with this until you get a chain that you somewhat like. So something like this looks pretty cool. You can also use a metal texture from Polyhaven or something like that. I'm just going to keep this tutorial short and simple. So I will select this, make sure it enters all the way out of frame and same goes for this. And now that should look pretty cool like so. All right, so that's the bulk of the work done. Now all we have to do is go over here, add a plane. Let's make a new geometry node setup. So I'm going to add this plane, set it right over here, click on new, delete the group input and add a grid. I will turn this down so you have a bit more space to see what I'm doing. Grid into the geometry and it's pretty small. So we have to increase the size so it covers the entire frame, bring it upwards just a little bit and also increase the vertices to at least 128, maybe even more later on. Add a set position node like this, add a noise texture, add a vector math node because we need to correct the noise texture. You will see what I mean. So if I plug the color into the offset, the plane will move all the way over there, which is not what we want. So I'm going to add this, set it to subtract 0.5 and now it should stay in its place. And we can play around with the scale, of course, and have some fun with this, something like so. Increase the detail, increase the roughness or decrease the roughness, whatever you want. I'm going to increase it a bit and you can also play around with the distortion. And if you want the peaks to be even higher, you can also add uh, RGB curves, bring it right over here, play around with this in order to get a different type of shape. I'm not going to add this for this uh, tutorial right now. Don't want to play around with it, but you can do that. That's just fine. So then I'm going to add a material to this. So let's add a set material, bring it right over here. And I've got a material right here. It's a rock material and it's called stone tile. I'm just going to drag it on here 
and then look for it over here stone tile just in case you want to copy this this is what it looks like it's basically just a bunch of noise textures and four noise textures brought together to make a specific type of material but what you can also do is grab a material from polyhaven once again just make sure it's a dark rock or a rock that we can change the value of now that we've got this that's looking pretty fine so i'm going to add a plane rx 90 bring it backwards all the way over here increase the scale of this give it a new material set the color to black increase the metallic decrease the roughness and now this scene looks a bit like this we can also select the jbl go to timeline and delete the keyframes that we already had so now i'm going to add bubble world which is for free on my gumroad link is in the description Control v and now we've got our bubbles right over here and it looks a bit like this of course this is way too much and we've got this one bubble right here which we textured and we can place this down but keep it selected because we're going into the shader editor because these bubbles now are blue but actually we want it to be more reddish something like so and maybe even the glass texture also make it a bit more reddish to give it a bit of a bloody vibe something like that and of course there are a lot of controls right here that you can use to make this a bit more randomized so we can increase the density to get more of them we can change the minimum size and the maximum size total size if you want them to be really big or we can also change the z height which means that they will go upwards just a little bit more and now they are moving about they are a bit too big so i'm going to change the total size something like so and now we've got some cool blood bubbles going on here which uh, looks pretty decent and all we have to do is animate this jbl and the chains so i'm going to select the jbl speaker and go to frame 20 give it a keyframe then take the camera place a keyframe go to frame 100 and now rzz and rotate the camera like this rzz until it's all the way over here press i and now the camera should be linear so let's press t linear so we've got the transition right here and uh, maybe it's a bit too slow but we will see so let's go to the jbl go to frame 100 press g y y and let's move this down so it slides out of the frame now this is way too fast in the beginning and way too slow later on so what i'm going to do is right over here i will place an extra keyframe press i bring this all the way to frame let's say 70 and now it's slowly moving and it's sliding out of frame so all we need are the chains so let's go to frame 20 once again go to the beginning set it to zero on the trim curve let's do 30 frames for now and set it to end press i all right what we can also do is take the trim curve go to the graph editor open this up maybe you want it to go fast in the beginning and then slow down as it goes maybe a bit slower and that looks pretty cool all right so this is me from the future this previous method without a resample curve and curve to points will not work because it starts to flicker and we want to avoid that because you can actually see the chains moving along as the curve progresses with the trim curve node so we don't want that so actually we have to set the length to evaluate it and then the problem will practically be solved like this but what you can see right here is that it's starting to make some problems with this and we don't want that as well so i'm going to add this resample curve and you have to play around with the count but now everything should look pretty smooth all the way throughout the end it is a bit of a workaround because if you look at the beginning chains are somewhat intersecting and it doesn't look very good but as it moves very quickly we will not be able to see this i haven't found a way to make this animation more smooth without using geometry nodes so there is a possibility of course to have an array follow along on a path which you can make like like this so let's add a curve path and now we've got a path right here you can play around with this of course then we can go to the torus i'm going to select it right here go to the constraints object constraint follow path and of course select this path that we just created now also add an array modifier like this now we'll turn off the other chains just for a second so we can see what we're doing and go to the torus the location should be set to zero on all axes so now it is in the right position course you have to scale it down increase the amount of them in the array if you then change the offset in the constraints you can animate this chain on a curve and it will not have that flickering effect so that's a way to do it if you want this to look more clean so i just wanted to give you that solution just in case you want it to be a little bit better i'm going to use the geometry nodes one because i don't think it's that noticeable with the motion blur and all but i just felt like i had to let you guys know that in the geometry nodes version based on the length it will create more chains thereby shifting the entire position of the chain making it look janky and this is the solution if you want to make it look 
look very clean. So just add a path, constraint on the torus and an array so you have enough change to work with and then you can animate the offset of the follow path. So that is the solution if you do want to make it look more clean. So this is already the end of the tutorial. You can play around with these values to get the result that you like but the basic idea was to make some change that go into the screen to add a background to make this fit and to slide the speaker out of frame. I hope you learned a thing or two in this tutorial and if you want to become an undeniable force in the 3D space then I highly recommend watching this video next. Thank you.